Dude, I was having a conversation with a Japanese Sarah there. Good morning, this is Quinlan, and today I am deep in northern Akita. This is bear hunting territory, the Matagi area. And today we're gonna go on an adventure to sort of rediscover an old trail that was used by these Matagi. And I'm here with the legendary Mike of Canyons in Guma and Jasper who works in Akita helping to promote this area. Where, where are we going today? Uh, we're gonna head up towards Takaba no Mori. Uh, and then from there, we're gonna try and find the old Matagi route. It'd probably be a bit of bush bashing, I'm gonna imagine today. And then uh, from there down to Omori and all the way back down to Ani. So probably around about 15 Ks in total. I've got my uh, newly purchased um, Matagi Nakasa. So you can use it like a, a nutter, you know, to, to chop through bush as well. Or it's very, very sharp, so you can use it for fine stuff as well. And if we meet a bear? If we meet a bear, I think I can run faster than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, the old adage, you don't have to outrun the bear, you just outrun your companions. Um, Jasper, have you have you been up here before? No, this is my first time. I hope not to die today, so the two of you. Off we go. As we start walking here, I just want to give a tiny bit more background about what we're doing. Basically, um, Mike has been asked to help with um, developing and sort of uh, exploring the Matagi bear hunter tradition and coming up with some ways that we can do some sustainable tourism, sort of adventure tourism to help um, visitors learn about this traditional aspect of culture. So the Matagi themselves were not just bear hunters. They did foraging, they did a lot of crafts, like a bushcraft, I guess you'd call it these days, right? They uh, did all sorts of things and bear hunting is just maybe the most dramatic sounding thing of what they did and so it often gets translated as bear hunter. And look, we've got bear footprints that you can just lightly see on the road that we're walking here. Bears like paved roads too. Oh, it's easier for them. There's a lot of different information on the internet in terms of the number of um, black bears, or these moon bears, the Asiatic yeah. black bear. Are they in fact endangered or are they increasing? Do, do you know? The numbers in general in the world are decreasing mainly due to loss of habitat. But up in the north here, they keep track of our numbers. It's a pretty pretty stable population up here. The Matagi are very much guardians of the forest, so sustainability, they've lived like this for thousands of years. They're in touch with populations of animals. They know not to overhunt, whereas the Ani Matagi group used to be 50 hunters. They're around, now around 15. So there's 15 left, and do they have an official union or group with membership or is it a more informal community? Uh, so somewhere somewhere in between it's reasonably informal but they do have a, a leader that gets sort of elected. The first few kilometers of the trail are basically following old roads before we cut off into the bush. It's still beautiful. As we continue the path narrows into gravel and then presumably something's even smaller until there'll be a hard to read footpath. I've learned this trip that the bear call <laughs> that I've done in some of my earlier videos that I usually do when I'm hiking and don't want to meet bears, the woo thing, that is actually common practice among the Matagi, the bear hunters, when they don't want to meet bears or when they want to shock them. Oh, look at this. It's from a uh, magnolia. Neat, huh? The uh, Ainu would make tea out of this. Neat, huh? At the first junction, we are deciding which way to go, and our fearless leader is uh, following our original plan to go straight ahead here. You can see there's an actual trail marker because Moriyoshi, which is famous for snow monsters in the winter, but also great really any time of year, you can come down the backside this direction. And don't the bears love these wood signs? Look at this, just chewed all the hell. The bears love a nibbling. I think we're gonna go this way. Oh, all right, actually we're gonna head up on the Moriyoshi Trail. This okay then. Flat. Otherwise, we go down there and down and up again, and then follow the same way up. So. Yeah, avoid down and up. I'm, I'm with you there. Yeah. Nibble, nibble, nibble. Mike just pointed out that these are Mataki markings 
on this beech tree here. Sometimes they they mark their uh, uh, the fact that they've caught something. This clearly looks like taka here. This could be you, maybe? And this looks like it might have been dye, but it's all broken off here. But somebody's name, this almost looks like year, like the age, like Sai, like I'm, yeah. yeah, whatever age. And so a number, can't read here. Toby? I haven't seen these in the Buna Forest in Iwate. Is this a, this looks like a bear claw or did they intentionally make it look like a bear claw? They look, make it look like a bear claw. All right. But, um, it is possible with. Yeah, these markings are just all over the place here. So the bear hunters have been for generations carving these markings, their names, maybe little notes, maybe bragging about what they've caught, things like that, keeping records on these beech trees for hundreds of years. And it's really interesting to see. They're still doing it because the markings we're seeing aren't that old, they're just 30 years old. So the tradition lives on. And just like that, the forest has transformed. Look at these ancient cedar. These guys have been around for a bit. All right, we've made a decision. The trail goes down this way, but the mark that he, that Mike uh, heard from the Matagi when they told him the route and he drew on a detailed terrain map, veers off this direction. And so ah, we make our foray into the bush. No trail for us here. Just following GPS data, going through the bush. We have found the trail. Here's some Mataki markings on the tree. It may not be an incredibly clear trail, but if you can do any observation or pathfinding whatsoever, you would definitely notice that this is no doubt a trail. Now look at all these markings up here. Pretty cool. Wow. While this is clearly a trail, it's really overgrown and involves a lot of bush bashing, as Mike would say. We keep uh, going off trail and finding the trail, going off trail and finding the trail. Right now we're smack dab on this ancient, but not well-maintained trail. I guess it's good to see what happens to trails when they're not properly trimmed and they don't get a lot of foot traffic. This, this is what happens to them. Smell. Say it again. You smell bear? Mm. What is, really? I can smell animal. We're along the top ridge at the moment, but the hunters actually come up from the bottom of the valley um, because the bears are usually down close to the rivers um, and they'll come up the steep ridges and they'll have some people walking up the valley making noise, which pushes the bear up towards the top and they'll have the, the shooter uh, at the top ready to hopefully um, get the bear. They just sit quietly on the, on the ridge and we may see a good example of that as we go along because it gets a bit steeper along here. All right. The original plan today was to be going with one of these Mataki bear hunters, but unfortunately the man who was going to come with us had a death in the family and so he couldn't come and so it is just the three of us. Tons of nice markings here. Someone wrote a book. I've been saying that the Mataki are bear hunters throughout uh, this video and probably in other videos as well because that's how a lot of people think of them, but actually bear hunting is maybe 10% of what they do. A lot of what they do is just uh, mountain stewardship, general foraging, and other things like that. So this valley down here is the actual valley where the uh, Mataki would, during the winter months when there's better visibility, hunt bears? Correct, yeah. So they'll use the two ridges um, on either side um, and have spotters along the ridges. And then the people doing the flushing will walk up from the bottom. The shooter, usually one to maybe two shooters up the top. And they'll only usually get one shot at it because the bears are quite fast. So once they hear something from above, they'll scamper pretty quick. So they miss, the bear runs back down, ch charging the guys uh, who are walking up. So well, what happens then? 
uh, they've got to get out the hell out of the way because they don't have guns or anything. It's only the people at the top. If you come at the king, you best not miss. Exactly. Bam. There is Yasunotaki. And you can see Akita Yakuyama right above it. Brilliant. This is, I believe, the second most beautiful, if you believe in these silly rankings, second most beautiful waterfall in all of Japan. Bear's been climbing all the way up that for a long time. See all these claw marks? It's a lot of bear traffic. Check out these fall colors here. It's toward the end of the season, but it still looks pretty nice. So we're on this gorgeous ridge, walking a clear but rather slippery narrow trail. Walking path. We've gone off trail again, and this last bit is just purely descending non-trail mountains slide basically and it's um yeah it's a bit slippery but you just sort of grab onto trees as you go do some control falling we've come to the bottom of the creek just fell down how do you feel that was stressful i think i aged between years not good but we'll see yeah that's pretty steep where we just came down huh and just like that we are back to the gravel road, though the place we parked is probably a couple kilometers further down. Four, days, Four kilometer walk. All right, we got a 4K walk on the road before we get back to the car. That's okay. There's one more quirk on our trail. We're leaving the gravel road to go back on this old road, which is potentially a shortcut, though it may be a little bit rougher at places. And this is going to get us back to our car faster. Hear that? That's a kamoshka, Japanese sero. I was having a conversation with a Japanese Sarah there. What were the contents of the conversation? Well, I'm we were talking about what was delicious in the forest this season, and I was recommending some of the foliage over that way. And what was it recommending? Um, it was saying, who the hell are you? You sound like you have a foreign accent. <laughs> and I was trying to convince him I was local. <laughs> nice one. Yes. I, I'm not sure if he believed me, though. But he was responding. He was still talking to me, so he didn't think I was too weird. Back to the random descent. But we should be right above my car at this point. We return at last. So we made it back to my car. It was overall five hours and 20 minutes, not too long for a hike, and we covered uh, a little over 16 kilometers. Jasper, what did, what did you think of that? Well, it was fun, but I would say pretty scary. What was scary? Like, I guess the slopes, like coming back down, was scary. Like did you really think you were going to die? Yes, I did. Yes, wow. I did. So you faced death. I did, and I survived. Congratulations. I'm a survivor. She's a survivor. Mike, what do you say about the route today? Oh, yeah, it's a bit of fun, eh? A good bit of bush bashing. I uh, saw a bit of matagi, sort of, uh, you know, signs from the old matagi. So uh, I think it's got real potential. Some beautiful views of uh, some waterfalls. So, yeah, I think it's got real potential to develop as a trail for the future. Excellent. Good fun. Yeah, man. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Yeah. yeah. We got a lot of driving ahead of us and I've got probably a good three and a half hours of driving before I make it back to Morioka. So I'm going to say goodbye right here. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, adventure we had uh, going off trail following the old Mataki route as led by the legendary Mike Harris. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the trails.